Hi there, my name is Terry Lynch. I'm an Irish medical doctor, psychotherapist and author of two books on mental health, Selfhood, a key to the recovery of emotional well-being and mental health and the prevention of mental health problems, and my first book, Beyond Prozac, Healing Mental Distress. I'm a campaigner for change in mental health. And this is one of a series of videos I am creating to demonstrate the type of changes I feel need to happen in mental health. This video is about misinformation. Misinformation in mental health, misinformation within psychiatry. Generally in the 21st century in which we live, the public are generally well informed on matters that concern them and untruths and half-truths tend to be found out a lot quicker nowadays than they used to be because there are so many different forms of media nowadays. We've seen this in the political sphere, in the financial world and indeed within various religions, the scandals that have emerged over the past 20 to 30 years. One area stands out in terms of misinformation and that is mental health. It is one area, I'm sure there are other areas, but certainly mental health stands out as one area where the public remains seriously misinformed. In regard to what are called mental illnesses, for example, <clears throat> for example, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, etc., the public are regularly informed that the problem lies in the brain, that these conditions are caused by chemical imbalances, for example, serotonin, that they are neurobiological disorders and that they are genetically inherited. However, the fundamental problem and issue here is not brain pathology, it is emotional distress and this will be the subject of many of my videos. Emotional distress presenting in various forms, experienced in various ways and I'll come back to that. The public are told that psychiatry is the medical specialty that most understands the brain and that psychiatric practice is solidly based on and grounded in science. That is the best we can do. That no other option merits serious consideration. The public are regularly informed that medication acts by correcting chemical imbalances or by treating neurobiological disorders and that mental illness is frequently genetic. But the science must be questioned because the quality of science in mental health as I have become aware, being a doctor for over 20 years now, the quality of the science is poor and in the public interest it simply must be questioned. So here are some truths. There are no known chemical imbalances in the brain that account for or cause mental illnesses. Fact. There are no established neurobiological abnormalities that cause mental illnesses. Fact. There are no established genetic abnormalities known to cause psychiatric illnesses. Don't just take my word for it. Here's a quote from the Oxford Handbook of Psychiatry, 2005, which is a medical textbook. And this is a direct quote. Clinical investigations, including blood tests, imaging techniques, and karyotyping, which is the medical term for genetic testing, play a smaller role in psychiatry than in other specialties. The truth is they play no role. They are mainly carried out to exclude medical conditions. In fact, they are always carried out to exclude medical conditions. Physical investigations are rarely requested unless clinical examination indicates the possibility of an underlying undiagnosed physical disorder. In other words, a non-psychiatric disorder. So the supposed chemical and biological abnormalities are never confirmed by chemical or laboratory tests. Clinical tests such as blood tests, scans, etc. are of no help whatsoever to psychiatrists, either in the diagnosis or management of their patients. Hence they are never a part of the diagnostic or treatment process other than to exclude organic illness, to check drug levels or to check organ function, in other words, to check whether the drugs might be causing toxicity within the body. Unlike all other medical specialties, in their everyday work with people, psychiatrists never investigate the brain, except to exclude non-psychiatric illnesses. Now think about it. 
If you walk down a busy neurology ward any morning, or neurosurgical ward, or a cardiology ward, you will see the doctors on their ward rounds looking at scan results, looking at the images up on their screens, looking through test results. And these tests and investigations are enormously important to these doctors in helping them with their diagnosis and management processes. You will not see that in a psychiatric ward. You will almost never see psychiatrists looking at scans up on their screens or indeed blood tests. Now, yes, you will see psychiatrists looking at blood tests to check for, as I said earlier, drug levels and toxicity levels, but not as a help in terms of the direct management of a supposed chemical imbalance or neurobiological abnormality. So it's a case of believe what we say, not what we do. Given how much psychiatrists talk about the brain, one would expect that evaluating the brain would be central to their approach. But as I just said, it isn't. And again, here's a quote from the Oxford Handbook of Psychiatry. Psychiatrists are the only medical specialists who rarely directly examine the organ they treat. The chances that a patient with a serious psychiatric disorder has even had a brain scan are fairly slim. Another quote from that book. Psychiatrists prescribe antipsychotics, antidepressants, mood stabilizers, shock treatment, but do not know beforehand which areas of the brain are working well and which are not functioning properly. Nor can they measure the impact of the drug during or after administration. That last sentence is mine. Another quote from the book, the Oxford Handbook of Psychiatry. In the main, psychiatrists base diagnosis and treatment on symptoms, not on brain imaging or other investigations. And yet this book, the Oxford Handbook of Psychiatry, states that all psychiatric illnesses are by their nature organic, having already said that there are no or tests that can be carried out to establish this. How could this be? It's because psychiatry is fundamentally a belief system, an ideology. And this idea that all psychiatric illnesses are by their nature organic is fundamental to that belief system and ideology. Without that core belief, there wouldn't be the ideology that is there within psychiatry. And it's interesting that neurology, which is a specialist that do, the specialty that does truly investigate the, the brain, differentiates between organic and functional problems. And in neuro neurological terms, psychiatric problems come under the term functional rather than organic. I think that says it all, really. <clears throat> Here's another truth. There is not a single psychiatric medication that acts to replace a deficiency of any chemical, such as, for example, insulin does in diabetes, or eltroxin does in hypothyroidism, people who have a low-functioning thyroid. According to psychiatry, the biological answers have been just around the corner now for well over 100 years. We're so close, we're this close to knowing the biological causes of mental health problems. That's been the theme for the past 100 years. And this keeps the public believing, hooked on the, seeing the idea of biology as the cause as being reasonable. <clears throat> Yet the evidence supporting a biological understanding of mental health is actually extremely weak. Historically in medicine, whenever a biological cause has been discovered, it transfers from psychiatry to the relevant medical specialty. Psychiatry deals with functional problems and organic problems are transferred elsewhere. And it's well over 70 to 80 years, as far as I'm aware, since any such discovery of a biological cause for psychiatric problems. Psychiatry does not and never has dealt with curable biological mental health problems. There is no precedent in medicine for this. Medicine is a conservative profession, as I well know, and in which precedent is very rarely transgressed. Psychiatry operates and thrives in this in-between place. In other words, we're this close to having established the biological causation, but we haven't yet caused it. It's in between. 
Because once an organic cause is identified, the care of that person switches to whatever specialty is appropriate. For example, if a person with psychiatric symptoms is found to have a brain injury or a brain tumour or encephalitis, they are immediately um, admitted under the care of a neurologist or a neurosurgeon. If a person presenting with psychiatric symptoms is found to have pernicious anemia, then they are, with vitamin B12 deficiency, they are then transferred to the care of a haematologist, a blood specialist. If a person presenting with psychiatric problems is found to have a thyroid problem or adrenal gland problems, then they are transferred to an endocrinologist. Or a person, say, with, who's found to have lupus, SLE, which can sometimes cause uh, psychiatric problems, then they are transferred to a physician, to an immunologist or a rheumatologist. And this would be quite rare that an organic cause would be found for psychiatric problems. But this is how the medical system works, always. In Beyond Prozac I wrote this, and it still applies. I called it the cart before the horse. Filled with a passionate desire to establish psychiatry as a scientific, respectable branch of medicine, many psychiatrists over the past 100 years have made, unwittingly, a major error of judgment. They first arrived at their conclusion, and then they set up their research to establish that their presumed conclusion was correct. Therefore, concluding that mental health problems are caused by a physical brain defect, they designed their research to establish that this was the case. So the, car the cart, which is the conclusion, was put before the horse, which is the hypothesis, an approach that is inherently and fundamentally unscientific. And a hundred years on, they are still putting the cart before the horse, in that sense. Doctors set out to reinterpret the person's distress and to repackage it according to the principles of their own belief system, the psychiatric diagnosis, diagnostic process, rather than to set out to truly understand the person and to understand and make sense of their experiences. As I said at the outset, the fundamental problem and issue here is not brain pathology, it is emotional distress. Emotional distress presenting in various forms, experienced in various ways, and people's various ways of dealing with their distress, including their protective strategies that they use and their coping and compensatory mechanisms. I'm 20 years working in this field and I find ample explanation for people's mental health problems in the area of emotional distress. So, to conclude, the world of psychiatry and mental health is exceptional in the degree to which there is misinformation in mental health, in, within medicine. It is very serious and it simply must change. And future videos that I will be creating will address this and other related matters. Thanks very much for listening.